announcement that I feel the Lord is putting in, has put in my heart. This month shall be your belong beginning of the month. Uh, it's saying that this month shall be your beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. This, this, this was a word that was, as a word that was released. I had in my spirit as, as a word from the Lord. And for me, I heard the Lord say, that is your word. And let me say to you, God speaks to us and he is speaking to us all the time. But he speaks to us in simplicity, in a way that if you are not attentive, you will not hear him. Because you will hear a human being and think this is a man or a woman that is just releasing a word to us. But if you are attentive, the word will minister to you. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you, why do we come to church? We come to church so that we can hear God. We do not come to church to hear a preacher preaching. No, we don't. If that's what you do, if you come to hear me speak or preach, then you are missing it. But if you come to hear God, you will hear a word. And sometimes even the things that we say, even to us, sometimes they don't make sense. And we ask ourselves, why do, did I say that? And you know you release a word and someone picks it and say, that's my word. And this is what I hear the, word say, the Lord say to us. This month, this month now, literally, this particular month shall be your beginning of months. Hallelujah. I can see some people deceiving. Amen. Please hear the word of the Lord. It's a new beginning. It's a new season that we are entering into. This particular month ushers in a new beginning of months. Praise the Lord. It says months. So going forward, you have entered into a new beginning. Last month closed the chapter of your life. This month opens a chapter, a new chapter of your life. If you are pathetic in your thinking, receive what the Lord is saying. Amen? And I want to thank God for us today. Because the reason why we are gathered here is so that we can hear him. He's telling you the past is totally closed. That season is closed. Please do not go back to the ears that you have lived, the period that you have lived of agony. The Lord says, this month shall be your beginning of the month. And it shall be the first month of the year to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our word. This church have entered into another season. It is the beginning of the month for us. It's like we, have, we are starting all over again. The pain, the struggles, the defeat. Don't look back. Now see what the Lord is doing. In the book of Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13, Matthew 16 from verse 13, if you can quickly um, go there. Today we want to talk about the church. When Jesus came into the region of Syria, the region, the Philip, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And continue. So they said, some say you, John the Baptist, some say Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living 
God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not re revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bide here on earth will be bowed in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let me say that what we refer to as church, that I'm going to church, is like you are going to a place. You know when you say you are going to church, you are going to a place. The church is not a building. Amen? Let's understand that, that the church is not a building. A church is more than a building. A building cannot be a church. If we are to define the church according to the divination, to what Jesus talked about from this verse of the scripture, and I would like you to keep, uh, to, keep to that scripture, verse 18. Uh, please, if we are to the, give, give it Jesus' divination, Jesus is said, I will build my church. And I say to you, Peter, and on this rock, he's referring to, he's referring to something, to a rock. There was no rock that particular time where there, there were. But he's saying, on this rock, I will build my church. He was simply saying, on this confession, on this revelation, that I am the Christ, the son of the living God, that you, Peter, has today revealed but not from yourself. Because he told him, not from yourself. It's not from the flesh and blood. It is not from your thinking. This is a revelation. Remember, he started by asking a question. Whom do people say that I am? And they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. And others say you are a prophet. But then he comes to them and questions them. But who do you say I am? You now. And Peter received a revelation from the Father. And he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he tells him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Peter, this is not from you. This is not from your mind. This is, I, Peter was was a fellow, you know they say he was kibere better, he was quick, he was those guys who just speak. But this particular time Peter was not just speaking. It's a revelation that he received and he announces that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Christ says, on this knowledge, then I am now going to build my church. Hallelujah. On this understanding that I am the Christ, I am now going to build my church. In other words, it's Christ himself who is building the church. Hallelujah. It's not a human being. The church cannot be owned by someone. The church cannot belong to a particular person. The church does not belong to any pastor or any bishop. The church belongs to the owner, Christ, the one who began the church. Hallelujah. It's through him that the church was born. Hallelujah. And that's the church that you belong to. Not this church called Gong Road. Hallelujah. Because the church is wider and bigger than, the, than Gong Road. We are just a, 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 a congregation, part of it. But you who believe in Christ that he is the son of God, then you are a component. You are a part of that church. 
Sometimes but we went through it. I think it's first Peter that we read. We are, we, we, we are living stones. We are being built. We are being gathered to form one universal body of Christ. This is the church that we are referring to and we are talking about. It doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to him. He is the one who began. And he says, I am now building it. I want you to know that you are part of this church. Of Jesus Christ, the church that he is building. And he said, how? Oh, because, because I'm the one who is building. The gates of hell or death shall not prevail against it. I want to make a pronouncement today. When you look at the church, the so-called church, our definition of the church, we think the church has been boxed into a small corner and every Tom, Dick and Harry is kicking it the way they want. That is not the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ, even death itself, cannot overcome it. Hell has no power to prevail over it. The systems of governments cannot stop the church of Jesus Christ. But the systems of the government can, can fake and introduce systems and denominations and religions that may look like the church. And the people get confused and they think that is the church. I want to announce today that we do not belong to a certain denomination or religion. Those are things that were invented by human beings to suit their own interests because of the divisions and, and, and quarrels and fights that, that, that come because human beings have interest and they are selfish in nature. But God has his church. You are that church. You belong to Christ. You do not belong to anybody. You belong to Christ. You have access to Christ and to his kingdom. Hallelujah. The gates of hell, death, powers, witchcraft, sorcery, whatever it is, infirmities, there is nothing that can prevail against this church that you belong to. And you are that church. You need to encourage yourself today when you know who you are. Because most of the time, when we do not know our identity, we will be given tags. People will identify, people will say who we are. And we think what people say, who we are is who we are. When they say you are just but nothing, you believe that. When they say you are weak, you believe that. When they say you cannot make it, you believe that. Today I came here to announce to you, it is the beginning of the months. This is a new beginning. It's a new church that the Lord is building. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. It doesn't matter what they have said about the church. The governments of the days may have said things. The systems of the world. Religions may have crafted things. But we are coming out of what religion has made it to be. I like what Chris said, I think, this week. That is, wants that old time religion. That was the church of the beginning. This church has power. Amen? This church cannot be moved. This church is mighty. This church has a key. Verse 19. What does that say? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Please note that. He tells them, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now he's telling Peter, Peter and the disciples, after I have done this, look at what I'm giving you. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. 
Now please get out of what you have heard about church. Get out of what you think. Think about yourself as a church. And Jesus is addressing you and telling you, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now what else would you want as a human being? What can be compared with the keys of the kingdom on earth? Is there anything that can be compared with the keys of the kingdom? Brethren, I'm asking you a question. Is there anything that we can be able to compare? If the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He did not say, I will give you the wealth of the earth. He did not say, I will give you the knowledge of the earth. He did not say, I will give you the beauty of the earth. The earth is very wealthy. The resources that are hidden underground, the minerals that the nation has, the earth has, enormous. But the Lord did not tell them, that's what I'll give you. Look at us today. What are we pursuing? We are pursuing the resources that are on earth. And the Lord says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. What will the keys of the kingdom do? Of heaven. Can heaven be compared with earth, brethren? The wealth that is in heaven can never be compared with what is on earth. Because it is the heaven that decrees and things happen on earth. But look at what the Father, the true Jesus is saying. When I build this church and you belong to that church, then I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bite, whatever you do what? You bite. Where? On earth. What will happen? It will be? Those are not words that were spoken by Peter. Now, these words were being spoken by and he is saying this is what I will do to you. You who believe that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Is there anyone in this house who truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? Come on, let's lift up our hands. We do believe he is. Then he is saying to us, we who do believe that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, he will give us the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you will bind here on earth, whatever is not in line with the will of God and the purposes of God, whatever you do not agree with on earth, that's what it says. Whatever you do not agree with here on earth, if you bind it, the heaven says, even in heaven it shall be bound. Why? Because the Father through the Son has given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What do keys do? They open. And they also do what? They lock. And then he says, and whatever you will lose or release on earth it will also be loosed in heaven. So you have the authority. This authority is with you because you have the keys. You don't have authority without the keys. It's the key that gives you the authority. It's the key that gives you the authority to say you own this house. Because you will open it and enter. And when you enter, you lock it inside and no one else can come in unless you give them the keys to be able to access now the father says through the son jesus i will give you the keys of the kingdom i want to announce to us today please brethren this is not just a preaching to excite you this morning i am not that type of preacher that want to psych you no no no, no. i want you to get the message that the father is releasing because he is tired of his children who walk on earth 
and they do not know their identity. That they behave like the world. Yet they are sons and daughters of the king. But they eat with subjects. They don't know who they are. They struggle like anybody else. And the Lord is saying, look, I have given you the keys. You have the authority. You have the power to bind. That which is not in line with the will of God in your life. Deal with it yourself. And deal with it by faith without doubt. Because you have the keys. Now this is the church of Jesus Christ. And this is the church where you belong. Remember I said this church was begun by Jesus. This church belongs to? To Jesus. Quickly Ephesians 1.22 And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church. And he put all things under his feet. This is referring to Christ. And gave him to be the head of all things to the church. Now, Jesus said, I am building my church. And then the Bible is telling us, all things have been put under his feet. Okay? And gave him to be the head. He is also the head of all things. And of all things to the church. Now, in other words, the church has been elevated also above all things. Praise the Lord. Because the church belongs to Christ who began it and who is the owner. Then if everything else is under his feet and he's been put as the head over all things and the church is elevated above all things and you are the church, is there anything at them that should be over you? The only one who should be over you and is not a thing then, then there is nothing because Jesus is not a thing. So there is nothing that is over you. Praise the Lord. Are you getting the message this morning? So what is it that is bothering you? It is under you. You have authority over it. Is it a relationship? You can deal with it. Amen? You can deal with it. Is it an infirmity? Is it a disease? Is it a sickness? That is a thing in itself. You can be able to deal with it. Because you have the keys to lock and to open. You can bite. You can lose. Amen? That's the church of Jesus Christ. What about 222? 20, from 19 to 22. Now, therefore, you are no longer speaking about you now. You, the church. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Hold it there. What is the Bible telling us? We are no longer strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens. A citizen has more rights than a stranger, than a foreigner. If you, have, if you live in the UK and you're not a citizen of the UK, you are a foreigner. There are things you never access. When you are a foreigner, you, have, you do not have full rights. But hear what the Lord is telling us. In this kingdom of his, and remember he gave you keys. Can foreigners be given keys? Can they be trusted with the keys of a kingdom? Can they be allowed to access the palace? Can they open the state house doors? Can they access the king? No. But the Lord says you have the keys. Now you are not foreigners. You are not strangers anymore. You are citizens and members of the household of God. Continue. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Okay? 
Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Look at our foundation. It is not a foundation of religion. It's not a foundation of denominations. We are being built on the foundation of pro apostles and prophets. Amen. Amen? Amen? From the word of God. From the Old Testament. When the word was prophesied. The son will be born. The king will come. Our foundation is secure. On apostles and prophets. And then it says on Jesus Christ himself. Being the cornerstone. That's the stone that matters. That's the church that Christ is talking about, that is building. Now that church cannot be moved. That church cannot be swayed. That church does not belong to me. It belongs to Christ. But when we come together, we, be, we become his body. That church that we are talking about is the church that was endowed with power in the book of Acts. It's a church that trans transformed lives. It is a church that even the religious leaders of the day and the, and, 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 and the rulers acknowledged that this church, whatever it is, they may not have called it church, they called it movement, or these people, they need to be stopped because they were wrecking havoc. In other words, they were turning things up, upside down. They were removing the establishment. They were bringing a new thing. Amen? Until the leaders noticed and they say, these fellows that are behaving this way, we take note. Although they are not schooled, although they are not very well educated, it's, they have been with Jesus. Now remember, it's the same Jesus who said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell cannot. So the Religious leaders, the system of the world discovers there is something that these people have that is unique. The boldness that they have is unusual. It is true they do not have credentials. But this kind of boldness and their act, we take note they have been with Jesus. The difference in your life and the rest of the world is because you are with Jesus. That is what will open doors for you in your profession, in everything that you're doing. Amen. Now this church that we are talking about, this church met in people's homes. Amen. That's where it met. Philemon 1, 2. Colossians 4, 15. Romans 16, 5. And to the beloved Afia Akpas, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. The church is where? In their house. Praise the Lord. It's not a building somewhere. It's a fellowship of brethren who gather in somebody's house. The gathering of God's people is a house. Okay? Greet the brethren who are in Rhodesia and Nephas and the church that is in them. The church is again in where? In the house. That's where the church began. What now you are calling church, what you call the great movement, it begins in people's homes. It begins in people's houses. Hallelujah. Romans 16, 5, 1 Corinthians 16, 19. Great fellow, fellow Gus and Julia, Nelius and his sister, and all Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Where? In their house. Okay, first Corinthians 16 19. Praise the Lord. It also talks about the church in the house. The Lord will use you even in your house. And the church is a gathering of people. Not necessarily this huge gathering, even the gathering that are in the houses. The Bible says, where two, or let me close with that. Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in them. The Bible talks about where two or three are gathered. I am there in their midst. Who are gathered? 
two or three, but they gather in his name. There is a gathering that gathers in his name. The church that we are talking about is a church that gather in the houses in his name. And no that, one needs he says, where they gather in his a presence. Love that's never been. But let mercy fall on me. But everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of the Savior. The hope of Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is my. 